Hi online family, Maddie here. We're here at church getting ready for Sunday and I'm so excited that you're a part of this message. We're a church that loves God, loves people and loves life. And I'm praying that this message is gonna speak to you, it's gonna inspire you and uplift you in your journey in life. So why don't you go ahead and share it with someone in your world and let's be all a part of what God is doing together. Luke chapter two and verse one says, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinus was governor of Syria and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. The time came. I just want you to stop and just think about that for a moment. This was the time. The time of all times. That throughout eternity, that that would be the moment. Can I just encourage you? God knows your time. He has your time. He has your days, Scripture says. He knows everything about you. He, you can trust Him with your time. Because at this time was the time that came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. I want to take a few moments and talk about the unusually usual Christmas. There's so much about the Christmas story to me that has extremes to it. There's things that you look at, you you could easily say that's normal, that's usual. I can get on board with that because that seems logical, normal and simple. But then there's other things that are just not normal, that are just not usual. For example, the Son of God being born into a world full of people. That's not normal to me. But a child being born, simple. It's normal. Seems usual to me. It's these extremes that we see in the Christmas story. You have the divinity of God. The fact that this is Jesus who came from heaven being born in a manger into a family. Two extremes, the the unusual and also the very usual. There's nothing usual about the Son of God being born into the world. But there's something very usual, very natural, very normal about a child being born. But God is up to something here. You know, God is even messaging to us through the way that He brought Jesus into the world. So the message is clear, but even everything around it points to God Almighty. I think about all the leading players in the story up until Jesus' birth. We see these two extremes at work. I think about King David, which is the house, the line that Jesus came from. Think about even how David enters into the story. We sometimes think and think of David and Goliath and the big story and the big miracle and how he was king, but we've got to remember how he started. He was just in a field looking after some sheep. It was very normal. It was very usual. And then God breathed upon him. And now we know him as King David. I think about Elizabeth in the story of Jesus coming to be born. Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist. And we don't know much about Elizabeth except that she was right, righteous and devout. And, but she had a, a cry on the inside of her. She didn't have a title. She didn't have a family. She didn't have some place she came from. She was just Elizabeth. But God breathed upon her life. I think about her husband, Zachariah, who was a priest in the temple of God and was cast by Lot to be there that day when the angel spoke to him and told him about John. And I just think about Zachariah. He was just a priest showing up for work. Seemed usual, but the unusual took place. And I think about Mary, a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph. Think about the two of them. They just seemed like a regular couple. Just making their way in life, it's normal, it's usual. But something happens when God gets involved. 
That's what takes the usual and it becomes all of a sudden very unusual and very incredible. In Jesus' name, I think about the inn where there was no room. At the inn, there was probably an innkeeper just going about his business. All of a sudden, there's a registration. All these people coming into Bethlehem. Bethlehem had their night of lights. And we know what that's like. There's no space available on the sidewalks or the hotels. It just seems normal. It seems usual. But God was up to something. Everywhere you look, you have the usual and the unusual. This is the way God is. He takes something that seems usual to the world and breathes his supernatural life into that thing. So I just wanted tonight, just two thoughts that maybe you could take tonight. And maybe you could think about this Christmas time. The first is this, when it comes to Christmas, we've got to understand God does the extraordinary with what we think is ordinary. God does the extraordinary. Let me say it this way. He does the supernatural with what we think is natural and what we think is normal. Have you ever wondered that your normal, your usual, your everyday thing is enough for God? That God actually wants to take it. He wants to breathe his life on it. And he wants to use it for his glory. What's considered usual, God can turn into something very unusual. God brought Jesus from the line of David. From a usual place, an ordinary place. And raised up the King of Kings. This is what God does all the time. He takes the things that we think are so simple things that don't have any value. Can I just encourage you, if you're in here tonight and you feel like you're at the end of your rope, you feel like you don't have any more hope, you feel like you've kind of come to a place in your life where you you feel like maybe God has overlooked you, can I just encourage you? I've got some good news for you tonight. You're not overlooked by God. You're not a mistake in His eyes. He has a value on your life. He has a purpose for you. He has a plan for your life. And He can take your everyday coming and going and use it for His glory. Because this is our God. And we see this at Christmas time. He takes the the, the ordinary things, the things that just seem mundane, and he breathes his life into them. And all of a sudden, a miracle happens and things open up and potential takes place. What very ordinary thing could you place in the hands of an ordinary God this Christmas time? Your marriage, your job, your kids. Here's one, your heart your life. You know, right now there's 8.7 billion beating hearts on this planet. And when you think about that, my heart or your heart next to someone else's heart doesn't seem that significant. It seems usual. It seems normal. There's no difference. It's like, yeah, okay, that against someone else's, it's exactly the same. It doesn't have any significance. But something happens when that heart, when that life is put into the hands of an extraordinary God, a supernatural God. He takes your heart, He takes your life, and He breathes His life into it. And all of a sudden, that, was, that which was ordinary becomes extraordinary. And everything changes. And all of a sudden, life opens up. This is the story of Christmas because this is the story of our God. Started with David. David's son knew it as well. That's why it says in Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11, speaking of the human heart, it says this, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Speaking of God, God makes everything beautiful so that the right time is beautiful. But look at what it says. It says, also, He has put eternity into man's heart. There's a thread of eternity inside every human heart that's beating on the planet right now. A desire that I believe is an ordinary desire for every single person to connect with an extraordinary God. It was the Reverend Billy Graham that said this. He said, give God your life. He can do a better job with it than you can. Because he takes the ordinary things and he does extraordinary things with it. If you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, there's going to be a moment in about five or ten minutes where you're going to have the opportunity to do that. But here's my prayer, is that something starts beating on the inside of you right now. Where you start to think, man, is God up to something? Was God doing something by my, my being here tonight? 
Was it a random accident that I ended up in church on Christmas Eve to hear some guy with a weird accent preaching about Jesus? Could it be that God was up to something? So number one, God does the extraordinary with what we think is ordinary. Number two, this is what we've got to know about this story because it's how God works. Jesus came humbly so that God would get the glory. Jesus came into the world, and we see this through the whole lead up, all the leading players in the, in the story of Jesus being born. The whole thing coming together shows us that the, the humble nature by which Jesus came into the world was all on purpose by God so that no one else would get the credit, so that it would be God that would get the glory. It was a supernatural birth, but in such a natural way. It was humble, it was low, it was in a manger, there was no room in the inn, there were, there, were, there were ordinary people that were just trying to make their way through life. There was, there was just such simple things happening, but God was doing something so great. Jesus was born to parents that no one knew, didn't have a profile. He was born in a city that didn't seem to have much going for it. You know, if I was God, I would have set the whole thing up so it would have happened in New York City or Chicago or even better, Sydney. <laughs> I would have set it up in a city where there's intellectual thought and there's amazing things happening. There's a cutting edge of culture and there's all the, all the right things are in the mix, but God chose Bethlehem. Why? So only God would get the glory. So that God would be the one that people would look at and be like, man, God can do amazing things with things that seem like they have no value. It was the humble nature by which God, Jesus came into the world so that God would get the glory with his life. What very normal thing tonight does God want to get the glory for in your life? Maybe there are things in your life tonight that you've written off, that you've said God can't use that. God won't use that. God's not interested in that. My prayer tonight is that maybe your spiritual eyes will be open to realize that actually God does want that thing and that He does want to breathe His life through it and through that thing that ultimately what's going to happen is you will be blessed, you will be taken care of, but God will get the glory. That ultimately, yes, God is going to work in me, that God is going to show me something. But really what this is all about is God getting the glory because God always gets the glory. God can do everything with your anything. <laughs>